Turn with me to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And um, I, I really hope that you, will gu- you guys will get the, get the message um, here and understand me because I do speak with a little different accent that you're used to. So anybody here feel like we need an a, a, a interpreter? Okay. Um, so Colossians chapter 2. And... Um, um, turn with me then, we just start off there in verse 1 in Colossians chapter 2. I bring, uh, while you're turning there, I bring greetings from Graceway Bible Church in um, Edgewater, Florida, which is just south of Daytona Beach. If ever in the area, feel free to visit us and fellowship with us. Um, also, I'd like to bring greetings from the brothers in Kenya, uh, brothers Simon, Cosmos, Festus, and Jeffrey asked to bring you greetings um, and send greetings to all of you at the conference here. And then from South Africa, the students in... Um, in um, South Africa, the Grace School Bible students and the church is there, the Grace Church in um, Port Elizabeth sends greetings to you all. So there's official greetings. You have it now, okay? I've done my job. Colossians chapter 2. For I would that ye know what great conflict I have for you, for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him." rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality, and power. Father, we thank you this morning for this fellowship. We thank you for this conference. Above all, we thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have life and eternal life because of the fact that he died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. We thank you, Father, that we can be found in him, not having our righteousness, our own righteousness, but his righteousness, your righteousness, and that we can be complete in him. And we praise you for this by Christ Jesus alone with thanksgiving. Amen. So my, my assignment this morning is, um, it's all about Jesus. And when, 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 when I got that assignment so a couple of months ago, or a few months ago, it's all about Jesus, you know. And um, I was like, wow, that's an, interesting, that's an interesting assignment. It's all about Jesus. And it's almost like you could say, you know, there's a way you can say, it's all about Jesus. You know, it's just, it's, it's really good, you know. And I just, I like that. And as I was studying the subject, and as I was looking at, for, preparing for the message, I, and, and every year when I do messages for the conference here, it always, you know, you, 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 you want to you you stick with a, the with a subject, but the subject becomes so big, you know. And then I go home, and I make a 145-minute message becomes a six-part series at home, okay. And so if you want to follow up and get everything that I have to say, you've got to go online and listen to the messages, okay. This is going to be complete later on. But in it, the, the theme of the conference is the God Factor. And, and, and my assignment this morning was, it's all about Jesus. Jesus Christ is the manifest, per, manifest person of the Godhead, and He's the only way to God, and the only way to God, uh, to know God, is through Him, okay? And so, Brother Ellen this morning did a good, great job on, on, on the triunity of God, the Godhead, and uh, being all being one, and I'm going to bold on that, and where he basically left off, I think I'm going to start off there, and we're going to talk about that. But our first point here this morning is Jesus Christ is the manifest person of the Godhead. And um, go, with me to Matthew, uh, to go with me to the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In John chapter 1 and verse 18, it's a passage that um, um, our brother uh, touched on earlier. John chapter 1 verse 18. You know, he rightfully also indicated that you know, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, okay? But the word Godhead appears three times in three verses, okay? 
But I don't have a problem. If you say Trinity, I know exactly what you mean, okay? I'm not going to get offended about that. It's the same way as the word rapture is not in the Bible. I don't get, a, get, get offended when you, don't, when you use the word rapture. I know what it means to be caught up, okay? And so I'm okay with that. In John chapter 1, verse 18, he says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. And I think John, as he's writing this by inspiration of God, and he's, and he's declaring this information, God is spending it for us in the book of John. It, what, what's happening here is the declaration that is made here is to show the superiority of the revelation of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ above any of any other than any previ- previous dispensation. Okay, Because Jesus Christ is now the begotten man. He becomes man and, 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 and took on the form of man in his likeness. And, and he's the manifest manifestation of the guarded bodily okay that doesn't mean that jesus christ never manifested himself before i think in the old testament he manifested himself over and over and over the second person of that guarded the fire the the, the fire bush with moses jacob wrestling with the man at the brook etc 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 we can just go on and on and on okay and i'm not going to go into all of that this morning but but Christ Jesus is above all, okay? But He's also, He is God. And the point I'm going to make this morning, that He is equal with God, okay? And when you speak about the Lord Jesus Christ and the second person of the Godhead, the manifest person of the Godhead bodily, He's not somebody that's out here by Himself operating in His own and his own agenda and doing his own thing while the, while the Father is somewhere up there in the third heaven doing His agenda and the Holy, Holy Ghost is out there somewhere uh, in outer space having his agenda, right? they all one. And when they function, when it's part of the creation, when it's part of the, the, the redemption work, when all that stuff that's going on in the Scripture, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all equally involved in it together. Okay? And, and we have to understand that, okay? God is invisible. No man has seen God at any time, okay? The Scripture says, no man has seen God at any time, okay? Now, if you have Moses saw God, or part of God, he saw the back parts of God, and God showed him with his hand, okay? Uh, so, so the scriptures here, it, 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 it's very clear that no man has seen God in any time, but the only way that you're going to see God is by the manifest person of the God, the second person of the God, it is by the only begotten Son. That's how you see God, if you want to see God. It's the begotten Son who is the bosom of the Father, okay? He is the spokesman of the God, if you will. And Brother Alan t- touched on that this morning too, okay? And, um, and he makes full manifestation of God, okay? Go, you, you in the book of John, go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5 and verse 37. Let's go to 36 and 37. But I have a greater witness, and I'm, and I'm going to go through this a little bit fast. I hope you guys take notes, okay? And, and, and I, I tend to be fast, some, you know, sometimes. I'm slower than I used to be, but I'm still a little bit fast, especially with the accent, okay? But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given to me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father uh, 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 that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So how do you see God then? By who? By the second person of the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And it's very clear from the Scriptures because when we come to the Scriptures, we come to the Scriptures by faith and we believe what the Scripture says. You with me? 646 and John 646. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So if you've seen, no man has seen the Father, but he that has come from the Father is who? The Lord Jesus Christ, okay? That's how you're going to see Him, okay? And, 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 and John chapter 14, and we're going to come back to John 14, but uh, I'm just going through this very quickly. John 14, verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I, seen, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen what? The Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Come on, Philip, you've been here with me how long now? And you say, show me the Father. He's been with you all the time. The manifestation of the Father's been with you all the time. I'm here. Okay? He says, believe, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? 
The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me, he doth the works. He is the only begotten, back to, back to John chapter 1 and verse 18, he is the only begotten son. I like that word begotten son, okay? Because that word begotten son means he is, he is the, he, the begotten son means he's one with. He is intimate in friendship and affection, and he's one with God. And that word begotten, if you look, uh, 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 sorry, not, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the next word now, but uh, the, 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 the begotten son is the one that's the full knowledge of God. He is the true son. He's the true son of God. And you know what? You and I are sons of God. How are we sons of God today? In Christ. So as he's the only begotten of the Father, you and I become that in Christ. And we can have that uh, relationship with God now through his son. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But he's, he says, the Bible says there in, jo- in, in John chapter 1 verse 18, the only begotten son, which is the bosom of the Father. That word bosom, okay, that's a various... Various um, uh, uh, references and definitions to the word bosom, okay? And, and, and I guess if I use the word bosom, most of you will like, I know what's the first thing come on my mind, okay? But that's not how it's been used here, okay? Bosom here is being used of in, in the sense of intimacy, friendship, affection, being one with, in the fold of, covering, within, in a close place, one with. So when he's the only, in and, and, and the bosom of the Father, that means he's one with the Father, enfolded by the Godhead. He's part of that, and he's a manifestation of that. Jesus had knowledge of God's character, his designs and nature, because that he was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was what? With God, and the Word was what? God, okay? And he's manifest that, okay? And he's the only one man, only man, create, not created, but only man born into this world that is, that is qualified to make God fully known. Everything is about Jesus. Why does God promise the seed of the woman, the seed? It's talking about who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Why is the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Asaph, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob became Israel, and the 12 sons of Israel in the seed line, all comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything in the scripture is about Christ, but it's not just about Christ, it's all about God, the Godhead and its ultimate eternal purpose. And the way that he is going to make that eternal purpose known and make us part and parcel of that eternal purpose is through the manifest person of the God at the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about him. In the beginning, God. Right? And so that's what we're going to talk about. He says in, 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 in John chapter 1, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. He hath revealed Him and made Him known. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Now from last year, I remember this pulpit. And I thought they were going to bring us, is this the same pulpit as last year, right? And I remember, man, my big Bible, I put this down here and I couldn't see my notes, you know. I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble now, okay? Because my wife wrote the notes, and I need to be able to put. You know, uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm just joking, okay? My wife didn't write the notes. And so this year I brought a new Bible, and so I'm, I'm uh, you know, my little one that I. Uh, so um, it takes a little longer to get to the places. Hebrews chapter one, verse one: God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he hath made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a a more excellent name than they. So the, the writer of the Hebrew is going to write to the Hebrew mind, who Christ was, who Christ is, and how they missed Him, okay? And it's going to declare Him to you. But we see here in this passage that, 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 that the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, He's the brightness, being the brightness of God's glory. That's who He is. Because why could He be the brightness of God's glory? Because He is God, manifest in the flesh. 
He is the express image of His person. That means that express image. He's an exact copy of what God is. Is He? He is God. You get that? And by the way, the Bible talks, and we'll talk about, I hope to get to that this morning. That's why I'm rushing through this a little bit. But in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, it says, Be conformed to the image of His Son. This one is the express image, uh, that is the express image of His person, of, of, the, of God. We're going to be conformed to that image by His Son. Do you get that? I get, I get glimpses of it. I see the truth, and I see the Scriptures, and I believe it. And I was just sharing with somebody last night. I see these things, and I read it. And, and, and I don't know if you've ever come when you study the Scriptures, and you read this information, and, and it's like you can see it in, your, in, your, in, in, in the spirit of your mind. You can see it. But you cannot really artic- articulate it. It's so, you know, it takes a lifetime to articulate, art, art, blah, 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 to say it. <laughs> All right? I can't even articulate that, okay? <laughs> Yeah, not much educated here, okay? And so, 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 you know, and, and it takes a lifetime for us to articulate, to come to the full knowledge of the assurance and understanding of this fullness of God that's in us. Okay? And that's Jesus Christ. He's, 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 he's upholding all things by the word of His power. He's much better than the angels. He obtained a much better name than the angels because He's the begotten Son. There is no true and full knowledge of God, which uh, 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 there is no true and full knowledge of God, which is not obtained through His Son. If you want to come to a full knowledge and understanding of God, the way that God has made it known to us is through the second person of the Godhead, and that's how you can fully know and understand God is through the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that is manifest for us. And the Scriptures is about Him. And we learn about Him and we understand. He is the way. In, 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 in John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the what? Life. No man cometh by the Father but by what? Me. He is the one true God. And it's got to be through Him. The Bible calls Him, you know, uh, called the Lord Jesus Christ. He is called Emmanuel, meaning what? God with us. God is not dead. Brother Ted did a great job last night on that. He's not dead. He is alive because the very God that became man died, was buried. And the very proof that he was God was what? The very resurrection. And now you and I have life in him. That means we're not just in Christ. We're in God, in Christ and by Christ. And we have an intimate relationship that, that Christ had with the bosom of the Father. You and I enter into that relationship with Him and one us with Him now. I just wish we can get it because if we get it, we would not be so preoccupied with our own lives. Because it's about Him. And I'm guilty of that. Christ is the only, is, Christ is eternal and He declares who God is. Go with me to John chapter 8. In John chapter 8 and verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, what? Oh, that's a pretty bold statement for a man that is not God to make, right? But if he was God, can he make that statement? You better know it. And we're not going to run all the I am statements. You guys can kind of run it in the Old Testament and in and, and, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. Turn with me there. 1 John 5, 20. 1 John 5, 20. I was wrapped over the fingers because I said 1 John already. 1 John. But I said it again. 1 John. Can't, can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I guess I'm in an old dog category now, okay? I see a lot of old dogs here too, by the way. First uh, <clears throat> John chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son is of God is come, that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true. Now, this is speaking to the little children of the nation of Israel, the, true, the remnant, the believing remnant of Israel. He's come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, look at the next statement. 
This is true God and eternal life. Now that is a great passage. He is true God and His eternal life, obviously, in Him. All right? In Colossians chapter 2, if you will, go with me to what's it, what does Paul say? The Apostle Paul brings us some, 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 some de- declarations. And by the way, I'm not going to get into that much this morning, but through the revelation of the mystery... Which, 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 God, which the Lord Jesus Christ reveals to the Apostle Paul. And the revelation of the mystery is the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Brings to completion God's word. And brings to a complete, full understanding of that second person of the God, God and His ultimate, complete redemption work. The mystery makes that known. In, 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 you know, and in, in, without the revelation of the mystery, when you come to the Scripture, you can, you can look at these things at Christ and the Redeemer and stuff, and it's not that clear, crisp. But after Paul finishes the revelation of the mystery and he writes it, man, God's Word becomes alive, and it's a unit now, and, it, and, it's, and it's clear. Do you get that? In chapter 2 and verse 9, he says, for in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in Christ Jesus, who is the manifest person of the Godhead, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It dwells in Him, in the second person of the Godhead. The Lord Jesus Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Not some of it, a third part of it, but what? All of it. Right? Right? So if it's all in Him, and it's all in the Father, it's all in the Holy Ghost, guess what? They are what? One God, manifest in three persons. Okay? In Colossians chapter 1, you're in Colossians there, go to Colossians chapter 1, and let's go look at this. Um, uh, Brother Alan touched on that. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning what? God. And in our mind, when we read in the beginning God, what do we read? We think the Father in general. Right? But it's the Godhead. Right? Because we've seen the creation as the Spirit, the Son, the Word, and the Father. They're all three together. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. He says, Who. <coughs> verse 15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God? Who's the image of the invisible God? It's the Lord Jesus Christ, right? The second person of the Godhead, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and what? So if in the beginning God created, and now we see in this passage in in Colossians chapter 1, it's by Him... And by Him, the, 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 the manifest person of the Godhead, that we now can see God and understand God and come to the full knowledge of God through the second person, right? All things were created that are in heaven, earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers. All things were created by Him and what? For Him. He is before all things and by Him all things consist. That's not a separate function and work from the Father and the Holy Ghost. No, that's just the one work of God. And Jesus is just the manifestation. He's the image of what? He's the image of the invisible God that you can't see. But you can see Him. How? By the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 19 of that same chapter. It says, For it pleased the Father that in Him should what? All fullness dwell. All fullness dwell. In John chapter 16, verse 15, He says, and, and Jesus says, All things that, are, that, that the Father hath are what? Are mine. Did He just name it and claim it? No, He had a full right to say it because Him and the Father is one. All things that the Father is His. And if you've seen the Father, you've seen Me. And if you've seen Me, you've seen the Father, Right? And if you want to be in Christ, you're in the Father also. You're in God too. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 3, he says, In whom are hid all the, wis- all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's in Christ that's hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Verse 9, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
And now look at Ephesians chapter 1. When he speaks, talks about the body of Christ, <laughs> you and I. Oops, I'm in Corinthians. I'm not going to get it there. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 23. Verse 22. So let's go to, just read for you. Verse 21 says, Far above all principalities and power, principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head of all things, the church. Who's this talking about? The Lord Jesus Christ, right? He says, All things uh, to the church, which is the what? The, his body. That's you and I, the body of Christ. He says, which is his church, the fullness of him that filleth what? There is something special going on with the formation of the body of Christ and what God is doing. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. And you and I are part and parcel of that eternal purpose of God. Now I can quote that verse, but man, I tell you what, I'm going to try and explain it to you. And I'm going to need six months. just to. It is so vast and it's so big, but it's so simple. Because in him dwelleth of all the fullness of the Godhead, what? The only way to the Father, and the only way to know the Father is through Jesus Christ, in whom dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Not only is Jesus Christ God, the manifestation of the Godhead bodily, and the creator of all things, but he is the one by whom, whose blood you and I have redemption and the forgiveness of what? Sins. God himself stepped out became a man and he was made sin for us that who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And that's not just the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father sent the Son, yes, but the Father in, in, in essence being one with the, with the Son sent himself, if you will. Now be careful how I say that because I don't want you to misquote me. But Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again. He gives us redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. In Colossians, you're back in Colossians there in chapter 1. In verse 14, he says, he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ there, the dear Son. In verse 14, he says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of what? Now, if you have redemption through His blood and the forgiveness of sins, I mean, you should just all go, Amen. Right, let me read that verse again. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Amen, man, man, that's right. You know, let's get excited about this, you know. Let's just be, let's not, not be dead as doornails, man. You know, this is an exciting thing. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who He's done for us, and being part and parcel of God's eternal purpose, it's a big deal. We walk in this morning and says, I've got a million dollars for each one of you. Man, you guys will all be so happy. You won't be sitting there, okay, when is it going to come? You have more. You have the unsearchable riches of Christ at your disposal. Because you have it in Christ. All spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Because of His redemption and forgiveness of sins that we have. And Jesus Christ's earthly ministry to the Lord Jesus Christ. Go with me back to, to John chapter 14. His earthly ministry to Israel. In John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father, what? But by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. You know him? Who do you know? The Father. How? You know me. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to see the Father, and you want to know the Father, you've got to come through me. And the way the Israel nation of Israel had to believe that was Jesus Christ was the Christ, the Son of the living God. They didn't have the comprehension in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and that finished work of redemption. You and I have it through the revelation of the mystery revealed to Paul today, right? But they had to believe that He was the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that would bring Him into that positional place in Christ, in the Father. Because Jesus Christ in John chapter 1, and it was read this morning in verse 4 says, He says, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
He says in John chapter 6 verse 32. Go with me quickly. John chapter 6 verse 32. Why well, my time's flying. 6 verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you, gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that, that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Jesus Christ is the way for the nation of Israel, is the way for us to the Father too. Verse 68 of the same chapter, and John chapter 6, verse 68 says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast what? He has the words of eternal life. Who has the words of eternal life? The Lord Jesus Christ. And Israel had to believe Him, that He was the Christ, the Son, sent from the Father, and who the only begotten of the Father, in the bosom of the Father. He is the Christ, the promised one. Look at John chapter 17 as, as the Lord is preparing to go to His death and the work on the cross. And John chapter 17, verse, verse 1 to 3, These words spake Jesus and lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify Thy Son, that Thy Son may glorify Thee. As Thou hast given Him power over all flesh, that He should give eternal life to many as Thou hast given Him. And this is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. So if the way that they can know the only true God is by whom? The one that the Father has sent. The Lord Jesus Christ. The second person of the what? Godhead. Not some guy that God was figured out, I'm going to have to find somebody to go out here and to go and die for them. No, no. My second person, the manifest, bodily manifestation of who I am, I'm going to send him. In essence, I'm sending myself. So that I can redeem man and make them part and parcel of my, pers- of my, of, of my purpose and intent. And it's by the Lord Jesus Christ that Paul has declared to you and I, go with me to 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that by Him is reconciling all things, heaven and earth. I go with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 first. The one central event of all history, of all history, the one event of all history, time past, ages to come, hinges, hinges on the cross work and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and that finished work of the cross. God's eternal purpose for ages past and ages and, and, and time to come, or time past and ages to come, is realized and is completed by that one central event of all history, the finished work of Christ. God Himself coming, becoming a man, and coming to die, was buried and rose again, so that He can fulfill His ultimate eternal purpose through that one central event of history. Now, there's much to be said about that. But look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19. He says, To wit that God was in Christ. Where was God? In Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of what? Reconciliation. Go with me to Colossians chapter 1, if you will. In Colossians chapter 1, And verse 14, uh, 20, sorry, verse 20. Let verse 19 says, For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of His cross by Him, to reconcile all things unto Himself by Him, by Christ, I say, whether they be things in earth or things where? Everything. God's eternal purpose for heaven and earth is reconciled by one. Who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Why would He want to reconcile things in heaven to Himself if it's also perfect? And that's the one central point of victory, uh, 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 one central event of all history, 
And there's his victory on that cross, by the way, where he can reconcile all things to himself. Because God's purpose and desire is for all things to, be, to, to come to him, to be with him, and to have fellowship with that. We, when we were dead in trespasses and sins, we were not good to God, nor were able to have fellowship or to be part of his eternal purpose. But now he calls us into, into sonship, if you will. To be sons. Any son. And God provided the way that you and I can have fellowship with him and be part and parcel of his eternal purpose. But the only, the only, can I say it again? The only way is through the second person of the Godhead, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's him whom we preach. Christ. Right? And him crucified. One, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 8 says, Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? Look at the next three words. God is faithful by whom ye are ye were called unto the fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord so you know what god does to make us part to reconcile us to himself he calls us unto the fellowship of what his son the lord jesus christ and if you and i who have trusted christ that he died for our sins he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures that moment we place our faith in the fin in the faith of christ if you will in the fact that he's died for us, was buried and rose again for our justification, that very moment God places us by His Spirit into the body of Christ and He seals us unto the day of redemption. And we learn about that being put into the body of Christ. We are called into the fellowship of His Son. And we now can have a relationship with God that the Father, that the Son have with the Father. You and I can have that relationship because we have that nearness to Him now through the finished work of the cross. Colossians chapter 1. Go back with me to Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, he says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us unto the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of His Son. We've obtained an inheritance. And guess what? One day we'll reign with Him. Not some of us, but all of us in Christ. God took your, my, your and my life who were dead in trespasses and sin and He made a provision to take your and my life and to heed it in himself, God, by placing us in his Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you get that? He hid us in himself. And he did that by placing us in his Son. And he said, Now, where do you get a verse like that? I'm going to get it. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 3 and 4. He says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. Your life is hid with Christ. Where? In God. And God chose to set that second person of the Godhead to manifest God bodily. And He hid us in, in, that son, in His Son, in Himself. That's a privileged position to be. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our what? He's our life. He's not just Israel's life. He is our life. He's the life for every man ever born. Time past and ages to come. He is the only life provided. And He's the only way. 
First Corinthians chapter eight. In First Corinthians chapter eight. Got five minutes. First Corinthians chapter eight. Verse six. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him. We are in who? In one God and a Father. We are in Him, right? How? In Christ. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. Can you see that? God hid us in Himself. How? By hitting us in the Lord Jesus Christ and placing us in Christ. And Himself reaching out to give us that. He made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be what? Made the righteousness of God in Him. We come short of the glory of God. We come short of His righteousness. There's none righteous. But in order to be part and parcel of the eternal purpose of God. And to be one with Him. And to be and, and, and part of His purpose. We need to have His righteousness. And God imparts to you and I His righteousness. By the second person of the Godhead. The manifestation of the Godhead bodily. The Lord Jesus Christ. And He hits us in Him. And He places us in Him. And He hits us in Himself. And now we can have this true, holy relationship with God. Not based on anything that we have done, but completely and ultimately based on everything that God Himself has orchestrated and planned even before the foundation of the world. In His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom hinges all things. And Romans chapter, uh, Philippians chapter 3 says, And be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God by faith. We're part of that new created new man, which is created in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 4.24 look, look at Romans chapter 8. And I'm, by the way, I'm really only getting into the meat of the subject. I apologize. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, for he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You and I are going to be conformed to what? The image of his Son. And it says, the Bible says to us that Jesus Christ was the image of the invisible God, Right? Now you and I are conformed to the image of His Son. Wow. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall, also, we shall also bear the image of the what? Why? Because of the resurrection of the second person of the Godhead. We shall bear the image of the heavenly. Our vile body shall be changed like unto His what? And fashioned like unto what? His glorious body. Now do you and I, we wait for that future redemption. But does that mean that promise is true? It is not true right here, right now? No, we have it in Christ Jesus. We are hidden God by Christ. Now. You know, Paul, I think Paul in his, in, in his ministry, and I'm just, two minutes. And Paul in his ministry, Paul says, he says in Philippians chapter 3, and I'm not going to read it, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Ultimately, what God wants is to be glorified in Israel, but also in the earth, but also in you and I, the body of Christ. He's going to be glorified ultimately because of the relationship we have with Him now. But he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. He says, not that I have apprehended, nor that I have attained. He says, and, and I see in Paul's life, he is still learning about this stuff. And he's still pressing. And every press he's pressing onward, guess what? The more and more the full revelation, the more and more understanding comes. I said to somebody last night, you and I, when we're dealing with this understanding of who we are in Christ and God's eternal and ultimate purpose with the body of Christ, Israel, etc. You and I, we, 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 we spend our time messing with an with a, with a iceberg that's in the sea, and we're just messing with that tip that we see. I've seen the iceberg. I know the answer. There's an iceberg. Can you explain it to me what it looks like? Yes, yeah, it's like that, and it's sitting like that. And that's great. But wow, when you dive underneath there, and you see, wow, there's so much more to it. And that's why you and I don't, haven't apprehended yet, nor attained yet, but guess what? We should press toward that mark. 
Because the more and more we get into the Scriptures, the more and more we come to understand what God has provided for us in Christ Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, the more and more we start getting it and we get that full assurance of understanding that Paul is praying for the Ephesians and praying for the Colossians. Because you don't have it. It comes to you. It's available to you and you have it in Christ Jesus. He's the manifest person of the Godhead bodily. And God has made a provision for us to know Him, not just to know Him, but to have fellowship with Him. He provided that for us by His grace. Aren't we privileged? Father, we thank You this morning for Your wonderful, marvelous grace. And we know that we don't deserve it, but we thank You for this wonderful position You've called us into in Your Son and by Your Son, and that we can be found and hidden in You And we praise you for these things. By Christ Jesus alone. Amen.